Um, yeah, it's a bunch of fake niggas. Niggas is fake. It's like, it's a real thing for them, you know? Like, they really be feeling like however they depict themselves, you know? They build up this whole life for themselves online and then they just embody it and become it and believe it. It's, it's hilarious. I hang around too many real niggas. So no, I don't feel no pressure from the fake shit. Me and my mama was in Miami, and Fred was making me beats. I met Snoop Dogg for the first time. We were smoking Kush. I had Chick-fil-A for the first time, Polynesian sauce. It was regular at the time for me, cause I, you know, I was hanging out with all these niggas and we was just making songs. I was just being cool, you know, cause Pharrell would work with a bunch of artists at once. And I'll be in there with Miley and Robin Thicke, Usher over there, Big Sean coming through. And it's just like a bunch of different studios who go and work with all these different artists. So, you know, I go say, hey, what up? You know, I got this idea. Try this. I had all these songs and it was never no plan for attack. So I kind of just put those songs out on my own. It was no rollout. I didn't shoot no videos. I didn't plan a tour around that mixtape, you know? It was just like, I'm about to put these songs out because like at the time I'm so new to the industry I didn't understand the timing and then how labels are supposed to do all this shit and the rollout and how you got to get the most out of just one thing and the single and you know I'm just like I ain't got no music out I need to put some music out so I dropped Idle Time on some rebellious shit. It actually um, opened up a curtain to a whole new way of thinking, a whole new way of maneuvering through life itself, the industry, the music business. And um, I was going through a bunch of management, you know? So I had like four different managers and then I finally found one that really had my best interests at heart. I was like making a bunch of music, studio, hop studio hopping and stuff, you know, working with a bunch of different producers and just like building a catalog, you know, trying to really just like curate a sound for myself that I feel like I would like and everyone would like. and really just kind of like moving around behind the scenes, you know? So I was always like in people's faces, but like just not in the public. That nigga tight. I met him at a music video shoot. I was hanging out with some homegirls. They was in this video. I ended up in the video. You can't see me. It was like background. And then um, I was like, bro, you got some tight beats. He was like, bro, you rap hella good. I'm like, send me some beats. Um, we only had like two sessions face to face because he was just like moving around a bunch. But um, we got it done and it was tight. And we just felt like it made sense, you know what I mean? It was just like completely different than what everybody else was doing. I was staying with the homie Bryant and um, it was right by the beach, right? Like ocean in Montana, like right there on the beach. And it was just like a whole nother vibe from Compton, you know? And that was the energy that I was going home to and waking up to and where I was at with it when I was making the Catronada music. I'm like waking up, reading books, going to the beach, riding my bike, hanging out in Venice, doing the whole beach life. I started baking, cooking, you know, we throwing like big, food gatherings and everything. You know what I'm saying? Like a young adult, like actually, you know, I got two older sisters and I seen them move out before and then come back and it's hard, you know what I'm saying? And then for me, I really felt like I learned from their mistakes and like was able to like really wait until I was in an actual position to like not come back to my parents' house. and. I haven't lived with my parents ever since. We, got, we had Thanksgiving at my house last year. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. Uh, it's the cross streets to the house I grew up in Compton, my parents' house, and I just really wanted to shine a light on the city. I'm trying to show the city off. It's beautiful. I've been tapping in because, like, that's their hood. Like, they be like, what the fuck, cameras? They come out, like, what's going on, you know? We gotta make sure like everybody knows, hey, we're coming. We're gonna bring some cameras, we're gonna be some white folks, some little kids. It's been fun, you know? I got to make the album with all my friends and I just love the people I work with. I love my job, so I'm actually living my best life. I'm talking about uh, real life shit, um, girls, drugs, 
Trouble on Central. I feel like the the title of the songs is just like so blatant. It's just exactly what I'm talking about. Like this is one song called Speechless, and it's just how it be feel. It's about sex. Man, all of them is tight. I like this song. It's on the deluxe version. I have a couple bonus tracks, and it's called It's Love. And I really like it because my mom's on there talking at the end, and my nephew did a bridge on there. And his birthday is the day the album comes out, July 20th. He turns six, and he's on the album. I gave him the mic, let him go. We recorded it, and then we found the part that made sense. And like, that shit is tight, super special to me. Black is tight. Okay, so when I was initially making that song, it was February, so it was Black History Month. And I'm like, okay, that's already on my mind. There's a whole bunch of black shit going on. The homie Jahan Sweets came through with a bunch of beats. He was playing them on the ox. And how I usually was, um, did it when I was working on the album, it would be like just letting shit happen. Like the beat would play or they would be making a beat or something. And then I would just have the mic on and be recording ideas as it would play. So like as soon as the beat came on, I was just like black, 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 black on the mic. And then like I did like some little cadence for a verse and I was just like fucking around. And then we listened back, I was like, damn, this is tight. We was looking for a feature because, you know, we wanted to get a, another black nigga on it. In the studio with Pharrell trying to get beats for the album, and he was working with ASAP Ferg at the same time. And Pharrell went home, because, you know, he got kids. And then me and Ferg was hanging out. I played him the record, and he was like, oh, yeah, send that right now. I'm going to rap on it. My favorite Greedo song? Right now, currently, it would probably be Buckhead. Don't know how I still ain't fuck yet. Told that bitch to fuck for me. I'm a fuck yet. Oh, don't know how I still ain't fuck yet. Oh, don't know how I still ain't fuck yet. I love Greedo. I'm a Greedo's friend. I'm about to write him. I'm so sad. He got enough songs. Like I, he records more than me. He, like he can make a song in five minutes. I've seen it. It's like intimidating. He's like. Got enough records to where if I hop on a couple, yeah, we for sure can put an album out. I just gotta, you know, do it. He's a living legend. Everybody's talking about him. Everybody's talking about him. Period. Because he's so relevant. He got so many tapes about to drop. I've heard three, and it told me he got like four or five, seven, eight more. Free Greedo. Yeah.